and that would be in this verse, lovely and welcomed by all priests. It's at the very end of what Jeremiah says. And he says, I will give the priests their fill of fatness. <laughs> So if I were going to do that, I could take this verse and become even more rotund. Can I be following scripture? <laughs> if I did that, Jeremiah <laughs> would be deeply disappointed. He is a prophet that lives in some very curious and difficult times. The kingdom of Israel has been scattered through the captivity and the dominance politically of the Assyrian nation. They were a major empire for about 200 years in the Middle East. And Jeremiah is living at that time in between the descent of the Assyrians and the ascent of the Babylonians. And there was that just edge right in there, kind of the tipping point between the Assyrians and the Babylonians, that Israel, for like 38 seconds, had some play again on that Middle East policy. They actually backed the king of Egypt, who had descended a long time ago, they backed the king of Egypt and lost the horse race because they didn't back Babylon. Assyrians. Anyway, his job is to give people hope. The thing is, all of us, I think, will identify that we have a kind of a center of gravity inside of us. When we start talking about our families, where we were born, what state we're from, what country we're from, we have a lot of identity in ourselves about geography. I am from New Mexico. I am the son of a man who was born in New Mexico. I'm very proud to be New Mexican. I want to tell you that it is one of the states of the United States. <laughs> My father was very proud of being born in New Mexico. My mom's family is from Wisconsin. I like those cheddar heads too. The ice cream is full of the fatness for priests, so we're all very proud of that. The problem is, in Jeremiah's time, is that that center of gravity was lost. The geography was lost. And what Jeremiah is trying to tell his people is that it isn't about geography. You are not the people of God because you live in this place. You are God's people because God is in relationship with you. It's not geography. So they can say, but we don't really have a king, and we don't really have a country, and we don't really have... Stop it! Your restoration, your joy, your fulfillment is not found in geography. It's in relationship with God. And no matter where you go, you are in relationship with God. That is your restoration. Don't give it over to politics. Well, we know that story pretty well, don't we? <laughs> that is so important for us to understand that we are God's people. No matter. In our letter in the New Testament, sorry, uh, we hear that we are adopted children of God. That it is God's will that we are gathered together by His beloved Jesus so that we can be adopted children. Again, this tells us what our relationship is with God. We are not just a people. We are an adopted child. A child of God. That is the good news of Christ, is that we become God's children. Christmas isn't just about God sending his message to the earth, Jesus. It's also about us listening to the message that we have become God's children. And because
because of that, we have abundant blessing. So you can see this theme is about relationship. Now we have the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew, in the second chapter, which is what we heard, the beginnings of the second chapter, went out of his way to stir up a little dust. He did this by saying to the folks that he was writing to, you know those Gentiles, that would be anybody who is not Jewish, two people in the world, kinds of people in the world, those who are Jewish, the Gentiles. You know those Gentiles? They're magicians, or they're wise men, or they're sages, or they're priests, fat priests. They got an idea. They came from afar. They heard, they listened to, they were aware of God's presence in the world more than the king of Israel. Matthew is poking at them, saying, you should have heard this. But it was the Gentiles that came to this puppet king. Again, are we a people because of that kind of leadership? No. We are the people of God because of God, not who the king is or lack of. So here is Herod. He's a puppet. He is nervous that a little baby can take away his kingdom. That doesn't sound real secure to me. So he's nervous about this. And here are people outside of his tradition that he rarely doesn't know much about who are telling him that the Messiah is about to be born. And that makes him very afraid. So he calls in his chief priests and he calls in all the experts and he says, what about this? And they say, well, you know, you're right. That's found in Scripture back there somewhere. Maybe you should read it every now and then. <laughs> Comment in parentheses. Oh, wow, how's this going to happen? The baby is going to be born in Judah. Oh. Well, hey, okay, I'm real sneaky here. So I'm going to send you all, go ahead, go. But come on back and tell me where that guy is, okay? Because I'm going to kill him. <laughs> He was trying to be sneaky. And guess what? These wise Gentiles <coughs> knew he was scheming. And they went and found the Messiah. It isn't about where we are from. It's about who we are in relationship to. That's the message of Matthew. So that if anybody thinks, oh, no, it's about geography, or it's about certain acclamations, or it's about whatever, it isn't. The good news that Matthew brings us in the revelation of Jesus is that this is for all people. And it's based on our relationship to God, more importantly, God's relationship to us. We are God's children. Sometimes nasty, sometimes sinful, sometimes snotty, sometimes disobedient, sometimes distant, sometimes pick something. Whoever got coal in your stocking, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> it can be all of those things. But the truth is, the good news of Matthew is that the good news is for all of us. Not even if we live in the state of Arkansas. <laughs> My general theme this month is to pick on Arkansas. <laughs> or, here, listen to this one. This is the real answer. Not even if we live in the state of God's will, God's will, is that we are God's children. All of us, all of us. We, as human beings, 
like to cluster and clump together. Sometimes because we get nervous or because we're looking for that gravity of who we are together so we claim a family or we claim a state or we claim something. What we really have to do is understand that we are together clustered and clumped in God's relationship. What about the Baptist? Uh -huh. What about the Buddhists? Uh -huh. What about those folks that have never heard of Jesus about it? Uh -huh. Why? It is God's will. That's why. God's will. That we are brothers and sisters. All of us. Here is the good news from Matthew. Folks, you may have thought that you were chosen. Sorry. You are. However, God's good news is even those Gentiles can hear and respond to and proclaim the love of God. All of us are God's children. Our job, not to try to figure out how that happens. It's because we always get in trouble when we do that. Always. Our job is to figure it out. Our job is to do what Jesus asked us. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God above all things. In this, we proclaim the good news to all of creation. Wow. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>